Hello there, it is I, That One Clinker, here to remind you to subscribe to my channel. It is free and it'll make me very happy. Y you want to make me happy, right? So please, subscribe. It'll be much appreciated. Now, on with the video. You may have heard of this one game called Warframe. I've done a video about it before on my channel, which you should subscribe to. Basically, the premise behind the game is to collect these fucks along with weapons of mass destruction and kill a bunch of aliens as you travel through the solar system. Moral of the story is, I like this game. I think it is epic, as the kids say. But one little mechanism in the game has had me intrigued for a bit. The Arcwing. Basically what it is, is a jetpack. And you can fly with it and do special missions. That's pretty much it. So I decided to embark on a journey to obtain one of these arc wings and thought you, the viewer, would enjoy my excursion. So come along fellow gamers on this first part of my journey to obtain the arc wing. I plan for this adventure to be a trilogy, so three separate videos. In this first video, we will be focusing on getting the Arcwing Launcher, which you can use in free roam to deploy an Arcwing. Sounds cool, but first, I want to give you a little insight on my Warframe getup. As you can see, I am currently building Rhino, a big boy, so he'll be nice to have. I also have my robot boy Taxon, who comes with me on missions, and I will soon have a doggo, I mean Kubro, that will fight by my side. The current Warframe I am using is Excalibur, and my weapons of choice were the Boltor, Furus, and Scana. Now, launcher time. I look at the Arcwing launcher blueprint to see what materials I needed to collect. I had no idea what these materials were or where they were located, so I asked my good old buddy Google to help me out. I searched where to get the first two ingredients, Erudite and Grope Troll, and found the answers I seeked on r slash Warframe. Mr. Schadenfreude 11 said to go to Cetus and take out a high level bounty, then enter the plains of Eidolon, ignore the bounty, and just collect the Erudite and Grok Troll. Sounds good, Reddit Stranger. So I headed to the plains of Eidolon, went into Cetus, and took out a high level bounty, then returned to the plains and wondered what the hell Erudite and Grok Troll looked like and where they are on the plains. After a bit of wandering, I found formations of Iridite and Grok Troll, and started harvesting. For those of you who want to know, Iridite formations look like this, and can be found up and about the plains, I think usually by rocks. And Grok Troll formations look like this, and can be found by Grenier structures. After some time of harvesting, I decided that I was going to stop there for now, and see how much I obtained. So I then do what any intelligent person would do, abort the mission. It would be after this moment that I would realize that if you abort a mission, you don't keep anything that you acquired during your time. So I got back to the orbiter to see my progress and surprise surprise, I got nothing. What? Why didn't it save? Oh, I don't know. Maybe it's because you aborted the mission, you dumb piece of shit. Kids these days, am I right? Anyways, I was bummed up by this, so I looked up how to get the fish oil, and immediately decided to get all of the Iridite and Grok Troll first. Since fish oil seemed like a very involved process, I didn't care to fuck with yet. We then move on to day two. I acquired a new sidearm called the Sycaris, that I'm sure I will cherish for a long time. At this point, I'm also building the Heat Sword, because I got the blueprint for free, so why not use it? Back to the grind, I headed over to the plains of Eidolon, and on my way there I question why I'm even doing this YouTube thing since no one is going to care about me or my content. And why do I need to take out a high level bounty before I start harvesting Iridite and Grok Troll? So when I reached the surface, I went out right away and found an Iridite deposit, and it only gives me one Iridite. Oh, I guess that's why I need to take out a high level bounty. So it doesn't take me a millennia to get all the resources I need. So I went back to Cetus and saw that one Iridite I got saved. I took out another high level bounty and went back to the plains to obtain some more resources. After a bit of scouring and collecting shit, I head on back to Cetus to actually make the time I spent in the plains worth it. Took a stroll around the joint a little, then split chalks. Now that I did a substantial amount of collecting resources for the launcher, 
I decided to reward myself by doing something different, playing Warframe. I wanted to complete the Mars Junction so that I can travel to Mars, but there was still one thing to be done before I could do that. I needed to complete Suicide on Mercury. I hopped on over to Mercury and saw that Elian, a capture mission, needed to be completed before I could even access Suicide. So I did Elian, you know, killed some Grenier, captured some dude, and that was that. After that, I then did Suicide, which was a spy mission, you know, snuck around, did some hacking, very delicate work. I completed Suicide, then followed the Yellow Brick Road to the Mars Junction. When I arrived there, I was met by a Frost Spectre. We did a little tango, I died, I went back, pulled out my one-head obliterator, and demolished Frost. It was actually kind of sad. I activated the junction, and now I can travel to Mars whenever I please. I got some neat rewards from completing it, such as the Void Relic segment, so I installed that and listened to Ordis bitch about relics. Void Relics. What a baffling concept. Ordis will try to understand Void Relics again. They say the contents of a relic are simultaneously this thing, or this thing, or this thing, but also that thing, and certainly never just one thing. That is, until... until it's exposed to a void fissure? And at that point, all the possibilities collapse, each one falling away until the relic cracks open and exposes one singular thing. Then, against all tenets of logic, that thing becomes the only thing the relic ever contained. <sighs> What a load of... Ordis prefers known quantities. Thank you very much. I also unlocked two new quests, Heart of Demos and the Arkwing, which you guys shall see later. So before I record day three, I did some work off camera, mainly getting the Erudite and Grok Troll, but also just some playing and getting more things. Let me show you. Rhino has finished being built, so I'm using him. My new loadout is the Gorgon, a big gun for a big boy. The Cronus and the Sonicor, which shoots out like sonic pulses or whatever, and is very fun. I also have myself a Kubro named Agnew, who I named after Nixon's vice president, Spiro Agnew, because I don't know why really, it just kind of came to me. Moving on, I have acquired the necessary amount of Iridite and Grocktrol, and now need fish oil. I head on down to Cetus, and once I arrive, I looked up how to obtain fish oil because I am now ready to fuck with it. PCGamer.com tells me that I need to first buy a fishing spear from High Luck for 500 standing. So I go searching for this High Luck, eventually find her, then proceed to try and buy a fishing spear only to find out I do not have enough standing. Oof. So I went to Kanzu and took out a bounty that I actually would complete so I could get some standing. Wonder if he even trusts me to complete it. I mean, he gave it to me even though I failed all the other bounties I took out. Well, don't worry, Kanzu. I'll make sure to complete this one. Just for you. So I did the bounty and used my K-Drive to get around the joint, which made it go way faster. Those K-Drives are hella nice. I completed all the stages of the bounty, then returned to Cetus. I went and bought the Lanzo Fishing Spear, traveled back to my orbiter, and equipped that bad boy. Back at the plains, I go fishing with my doggo and have a grand old time. I fished until I unlocked the achievement where you need to catch 10 fish, because I'm kind of a gamer like that. I went back to High Look and got the fish I caught cut up. I didn't have quite the amount I needed, so I went back and fished a little more, got those fish cut up, and now had enough fish oil. With this last action, I now have all the ingredients to craft the Arcwing Launcher. At that point, I go back to my orbiter to craft the launcher. However, apparently I need another thing. The Arcwing Launcher segment. Alright. So now I need this Arcwing Launcher segment, which I had no clue on how to procure. But first, as you can see, I am sporting the boar shotgun along with the heat sword. A pretty neat sword, I'd have to say. 
Anyways, it looks like I need to turn to my ally Google in order to get this segment bred, in a manner of speaking. Gameper.com says I can get the launcher segment if I visit my clan dojo and go to the Tenno lab and purchase it. Sounds easy enough. At this point, I didn't know how clans really work, so I took it as visiting one of the featured dojos. So I visited one of the featured dojos, went to their Tenno lab, and looked for the segment, only for me not to find it. What could I say? Kind of a dumbass. But even if I did find it, I still couldn't purchase it since I wasn't able to replicate anything from the lab. Me, still being a dumbass, then asks the recruitment chat what clan I am in. Sadly, no response to this. I then saw a message say that Lotus Booty was currently recruiting, so I tried to join them, but of course, I couldn't figure out how to do that. And just like that one kid that copies all the answers from the smart kid's homework, I asked Google for the answers. I watched a video explaining the process of how to join a clan, but when I replicated it, nothing happened. I sent out two messages asking to join a clan, and nothing. Even though the second one didn't send, but I didn't see that until I started editing, so it still counts. So then, in my infinite wisdom, I say, you know what? Fuck it. I'll make my own clan. And so I did. Ladies and gentlemen, may I introduce you to the RT Gamers. And no, it didn't take me 15 minutes to think of that name. A clan where only true chads and the poggiest of champs are allowed. Oh yeah, it's all coming together. This was truly a brilliant idea. What could possibly go wrong? The clan key has been crafted, so now I can step foot in my very own dojo. When I entered my dojo, it was bare but will soon be full of many rooms and awesome decorations. I attempted to build a tunnel lab, but apparently I needed an oracle in order to have a tunnel lab. So I built an oracle, and am now ready to construct a tunnel lab. I attempted again to build a tunnel lab, but was lacking energy, and in order to get more energy, I needed to build a reactor. So I built a reactor, then figured it out in order for the rooms to actually start being built, I needed to give them resources. So I thought, ah, no big deal, and I gave the required amount of resources needed for both the rooms, only to find out that the oracle was going to take 24 hours to build and 12 hours for the reactor. I was getting very impatient here and was sick and tired of waiting for everything to build and craft just to get one lousy piece of gear. I eventually calmed down and accepted that this will take a bit longer than expected. So let us continue, shall we? I returned to the RG Gamers Dojo as Excalibur, but cooler Excalibur because he has a cape, and capes are, um, Poggin or something. I also have my boy Taxon vibing up by my head, and look at him, he just vibing, he be vibing. Anyways, the Oracle has been built along with the reactor. The only problem was, I didn't have anywhere to put the Tenno Lab. So I pulled another big brain moment and destroyed the oracle so I could put the lab there. And when I mean destroy, I mean it was going to take two hours for the oracle to be gone. <sighs> Guess we'll see where this leads. It brings me great sadness to tell you guys that the RT gamers have been disbanded. I am truly disappointed that the RT gamers had to come to an end this quick. But it was the only way for me to actually continue the journey for the launcher. But have no fear, there might be a chance the RT gamers will return and more powerful than before. So unlike the other times I tried to join a clan, this time it worked, and I was graciously accepted into the Realm of Shadows, a very edgy name I'd say. So shout out to the Realm of Shadows for actually responding to my plea to be part of a clan and not just ignoring it, like others have. So anyways, I was back again as Rhino, and I went to the Foundry to claim a bunch of things such as Mesa Prime systems, which meant I could craft Mesa Prime, so look out for her. The Cronin, but it didn't have inventory space for it, and my new clan key. 
To free up some space for the Cronin, I sold my Cronus. I then claimed the Cronin and equipped those bad boys. Now that I got all swagged up, I headed over to my new clan's dojo. For a minute, I couldn't locate the tunnel lab, but fortunately, I found it. Okay, Jesus Christ. I was gonna say they didn't have a tunnel lab. I was gonna cry. Jesus Christ. Here's a tunnel lab. I tried to replicate some research and saw that my rank didn't allow me to do that. Well, that's problematic, but I'll worry about that later. I still was having trouble finding the Arcwing Launcher segment until it dawned on me that there was a search bar. I searched for it and thank god there it was in all of its glory. Finally, I could complete this expedition. Only there is one problem. I needed more Iridite and Grok Troll in order to build both this segment and launcher, along with a shit ton of Oxium, which isn't super easy to get, and a hundred thousand credits. That's like half the credits I own. Guess I'd have to go collecting some more, but first I wanted to find out how to replicate research in the lab. I asked my fellow clan members if they could help me out, and one responded. They said to read what is at spawn. So I went to spawn and it said, for rules, ranks, research, go to Halls of Sacrifice first. So I went down to the Halls of Sacrifice. There it told me I needed to donate 1,000 of any resource in order to be able to replicate any research. So, being the generous person I am, I donated 5,000 ferrite and salvage and 1,000 credits just to be safe. I then told the clan of my generosity and I got promoted. So a big gamer thanks to the guy helping me out through this process. Now for the second time, I didn't record me collecting the Oxium because I didn't want to bore you guys too much, so just keep in mind that there is a sizable gap between when I recorded this day and the next day. Speaking of next day, it was a grind, but I got all of the Oxium I needed. Before we dive back into my journey, let me show you my new setup. I now have Mesa Prime, who is very epic. And the weapons I was using were the Sybaris, the Silva and Agus, and the Atomos. All very good weapons that I recommend you use at some point. Now, on with the quest. All of the materials for the launcher segment have been acquired, which means it is now time to craft that fucker. What? I have to wait 12? I thought I had to wait 30 minutes. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, this is the one that you have to wait 30 minutes for. Oh. I thought it was like 30 for both. God damn it. For a change of pace, I decided to take Agnew to do a Void Relic mission. So I did the Relic mission, got some legendary gear, whatever, then went back to the plains of Eidolon, for I still needed a few more Iridite and Grokdral for the launcher. When I arrived, I did what I always had been doing since the start. Took out a high level bounty and fucked up some Iridite and Grokdral formations. Since I was in the plains, I went fishing for a bit, because I hate my wife. After this, I went on back to Cetus to secure all of the valuables I collected. Never again. When I went back to my orbiter, I saw I only needed 7 more Iridite for the launcher. So I returned to the plains one last time and collected the last 7 Iridite. The day of reckoning is now upon us, fellow gamers. I hope you are ready. Cause I sure as hell am. This took way too long. The time has come for the launcher to be built. I had a parasite removed for myself in order to look good for the occasion, then headed over to the foundry, claimed the aberrant systems I had cooking, and of course, claimed the launcher segment. I installed that bad boy right away, then started the crafting process for the Arcwing launcher. 30 minutes until zero hour. What do I do during this time, you may ask? Well, I shall tell you. I did a Meso Relic Mission at Casta on Sears with a squad of people who carry me. 19 minutes and 30 seconds remain. I checked my stocks and listened to some music. 9 minutes and 15 seconds left. I started building Aberon, then harassed some people online. Until zero hour was upon me. All of my efforts have led up to this one moment. We have obtained the Arcwing Launcher. Let us rejoice in the fact that the nightmares, the mission, were finally over. The only thing left for me to do at this point 
was to equip the launcher and rest. The launcher has been secured and I may now continue on to the quest that will lead me to the Odonata Arcwing. Thank you so much for watching. This took me a long time to make and I'm very proud of how it turned out. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. It'll, it'll mean a lot to me. Thanks again for watching and stay tuned for part two of this zany, wacky, awesome adventure. Just subscribe already. Oh.